This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Time to get our HD Nation on. Ahmed writes in, I recently bought a 42-inch HD TV to go with my PS3 and my home theater PC and my HD satellite receiver. Also, I'm considering a surround sound system. My question is, how do I hook up all these devices to my 5.1 surround sound system because the TV speakers suck? Ahmed in Saudi Arabia. I agree. I think TV speakers do indeed suck. Uh, <laughs> HDMI is really your friend in this case. Now, if the 5.1 speaker system that you're thinking of or you own currently is driven by a newish AV receiver, then it should provide HDMI inputs and switching. Basically, connect all your HD devices to that AVR using your HDMI cables, recheck all the audio settings, and you should be good to go. <laughs> now, if your home theater setup is more of a home theater in a box, say, or an older AV receiver with a limited number of HDMI inputs, you could connect your gear to an inexpensive HDMI switch and then run the output to your, the available HDMI input on the 5.1 system. Now, if your 5.1 system lacks HDMI input altogether, there are no pretty solutions that I'm aware of, at least. Consider upgrading to a newer AVR that offers plenty of HDMI inputs. Or you could go with something like the DVD-O Edge, now owned by the good folks at Simplay Labs. Uh, it's a relatively pricey option for the DVD-O Edge, but if you need more flexibility with older gear, it's one of those tools that's really nice to have for basically switching, video processing, and management of all of your goodies in your AV food chain. Yeah, when in doubt, use HDMI. But yeah, everything he mentioned sounded like an HDMI product, mm -hmm. so that would be the best way to go. And if you don't have an H A AV receiver yet, yeah. you picked one up for, I think, under $400. That uh, yeah, the Denon's AVR 591. Denon has a bunch <laughs> of models. AV Forums actually does a really good job. They have a, a great thread on the Denon uh, AV receivers, basically talking about all of these models that are incredibly similar but have different three- and four-digit model numbers. But basically, for like $350, $400 $400 in a retail store, you can pick up an AV receiver that has uh, Odyssey's multi-EQ, which is fantastic oh, room nice. tuning, balances out, especially if you have a, a room like the one my, my home theater in, which is sort of an acoustic mess. Uh, cold acoustic Challenging mess. acoustical environments. Yes, challenging. <laughs> it's a hot mess of acoustical mayhem. Um, but, because we've had some people emailing like, you know, I want to get more separates for my home theater system. It's like, yeah, you can yeah. spend another $1,200 on amps oh. or buy a freaking $400 AV receiver and get 99% of what you're going to be able to hear off of a surround sound. sound I'd rather have, you know, Get, get more people into just the low end even mm -hmm. of a multi-channel surround system right. than to go crazy on it initially. You can, always, you can always upgrade down the road and we'd be happy <laughs> to tell you what to buy too. So, John writes in, should I replace my Tebow Series 2 with a new Premier $500 with lifetime service or build my own Windows Media Center? I love Robert's setup with the Seton, but it seems like overkill when the cost of the card and the other hardware is totaled up. I am fine with building my own box, but need a simple to use device for the family. Your thoughts, John in Fremont. Hail neighbor from across the bay. <laughs> hey, if you plan on continuing your cable service for the foreseeable future, meaning the next couple of years you're going to be a cable subscriber, uh, you're not going to be switching to satellite anytime soon, basically, well then, I think the Premiere would be very high on my list for non-media center DVRs. Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind. The TiVo Premiere, uh, like my media center, doesn't support pay-per-view, or in most cases, on-demand video services that some cable providers offer. Uh, John, you mentioned that you are a Comcast subscriber, and guess what? They just recently announced an Xfinity on-demand app for TiVo Premier. That will provide you with basically most of the functionality of the on-demand service that you're going to be losing by going with that custom DVR a la TiVo. Now, you can also dump that digital tuning adapter that you're currently using with your old analog TiVo. <laughs> woo freaking who? I hate those things. But you know what? If you have to use it, at least they're available. Once you get the Premiere, uh, you won't need that box anymore. And I found that with TiVo service, I just did a set setup where somebody had a Series 3 that was sitting in a closet and got that hooked up for them, mm -hmm. and we were able to get rid of that, that tuning adapter altogether. You just don't need it once you get the cable card in the mix, which is nice. And for networking, well, the Premiere will give you all the internet goodies like Netflix, uh, Hulu Plus, season passing, revision three shows. That's something I really recommend doing. And uh, I also really like that the Premiere is a THX certified device, and it includes a version of the THX optimizer right on the hard drive, and they include the blue glasses right in the box. Wish they did that on all of the models from TiVo, but you get it on the Premiere at least. And while I do, I thoroughly enjoy my media center setup, but I do realize it isn't for everyone, and cost is an obstacle for a lot of people, especially when you're looking at $400 tuner cards, another 400 bucks for extra hardware. 
wrestling with cable cards and getting those set up, which it's not so hard nowadays, but it's also a PC you're running to, so it's as good as you make it or, yeah. or buy it. How and much time do you want to spend tuning it to make the, the, the experience painless for the rest of your family? I, I think it's one of the big questions. I, I think if you can get a $500 setup with lifetime service on that, that's, that's pretty compelling. Probably a lot simpler. Johnny writes in, what happened to SACDs and the component players for the home iFi that plays them? And is there a way to rip the disc to a lossless format I could store on the computer? I recently got a Chumoy headphone app, better over the year headphones, and ripped a test 70s Elton John CD and Apple lossless and was just amazed how much better the entire audio experience was. Johnny in San Diego. I love it when people like take a favorite piece of music create a lossless version of it and upgrade their headphones because I get these emails back and they're like, oh my God, you were right. <laughs> Did you know there was a cricket playing in the background of that sonata? It's like you, you start hearing things in the music you've never heard before. I, I feel the same way about watching movies with surround sound mm -hmm. versus TV speakers or even just good stereo channels. I just read versus TV speakers. The speaker set up in the living room and, and was, you know, it's kind of funny watching a three year old react to surround sound. I need to, I need to retune mine as well. SACD, oh, what a wonderful thing. It, Super Audio CD, it was a Sony created format that kind of disappeared. I mean, yeah, it's, no, it's gone. As far as I know, nobody, nobody had figured out how to rip or decrypt an SACD disc. My lingering hope is that Blu-ray would take over this mess basically left in the wake of DVD-A or the DVD audio discs and the SACD discs that were all kind of in a format war of yesteryear. I've losslessly encoded all of my music CDs, but I would like to start with source material that had even higher bit rates and sample rates. Uh, Sony Music, their website, has a Blu-ray section. I was surprised to learn today. And limited as it is, uh, many of the discs feature lossless encodes for the stereo track, which I was really happy to see. And Amazon.com, they have a listing of Blu-ray music discs. That's, I was surprised at how long that was. Most titles, though, are compiled from live concert recordings, but they often include a lossless audio track for that sweet, sweet ear candy kind of feeling. And uh, I was just happy to see at least concert footage, not necessarily your favorite latest right. gre greatest album, but you, odds are you probably have, well, for at least popular artists, they're gonna be, there's going to be some footage that's going to be in pretty high quality, live at least, with mm -hmm. lossless audio. The other thing, the direction you can go is to you know, get your analog, get a high end. I'm not even going to go there. Just, <laughs> like 96K it. audio, is, it, is, it, is the fidelity better? Is it pointless? I think it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of June 7, yeah. 2000. You know what time it is, folks. It's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of June 7, 2011. First up, Rome, seasons one and two. Both seasons were released in November of 2009, and now they're both being released in individual packages. Each season package contains five discs with an ABC MPEG-4 codec, a 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. They've included all the extras that came with the complete series box set, including two interactive pop-up menus that display trivia about the cast and characters, historical facts, and more. Eight of season one's 12 episodes and five of season two's 10 episodes include audio commentary, and you also get a ton of behind the scenes footage. Also released this week, Superman, the Motion Picture Anthology, 1978 to 2006. This incredible eight disc region free set includes 1978's Superman the Movie, Superman the Movie Extended Edition, 1980's Superman 2, Superman 2 The Richard Donner Cut, 1983's Superman 3, 1987's Superman 4 The Quest for Peace, and 2006's Superman Returns. All movies come with a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack, except for Superman 4, which has a DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 track. The set also contains more than 20 hours of extras, including deleted scenes, three Superman related Warner Brothers cartoons from the 40s and 50s, nine episodes from the Fleischer cartoon series from the 40s, a few TV specials from the 80s, a tribute to Christopher Reeve, director Brian Singer's video production journals, and a ton of behind the scenes footage and making of footage from across the decades. Also released this week, Happy Gilmore. This 1996 Adam Sandler classic comes on a single 25 gig disc with a VC1 codec, a 185 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 track. Blu-ray.com says the video quality looks the same as the HD DVD transfer from 2006, and that it, quote, looks great, particularly for a 15-year-old catalog comedy, unquote. Extras include five minutes of outtakes and 19 minutes of deleted scenes. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, GoToAssist Express. If you're an IT or software consultant, you're always looking to compete with the big guys. The problem is, you may be a one-man show. 
You need a remote support tool, and the best one out there is GoToAssist Express. The faster you can connect to a customer, the faster you can move on to the next challenge. Reduce your travel time and increase revenue by handling more support requests. It's brought to you by Citrix, so you know GoToAssist Express is easy and secure. TechZilla viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash TechZilla. That's GoToAssist.com slash TechZilla for a free trial.